Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us today uh, to, with our webinar titled How to Recognize Cyber Attack Symptoms and Ensure Infrastructure Health. My name is William Bell, Executive Vice President of Products at PhoenixNAP, and I'm joined by Jack Dennehy, SVP and Chief Evangelist at Alert Logic. Thanks for joining, Jack. Absolutely, William. Thanks for having me. All right, everybody. Before we get kind of kicked off, I'm going to start a couple quick polls just so I can get an idea of the audience and try to understand, you know, um, you know, who's out there, who are we talking to? It's going to help me frame the presentation a little bit better. So we're going to go ahead and kick that off. The first one we're going to launch is uh, a little bit about industry verticals. So just quickly, five, 10 seconds, indicate your industry vertical. Um, that'll help us gather a little bit of data. Um, and then we will close that off and move to the next one. All right. Okay, simple enough. And then throw those up there. So we got a little bit uh, all over the all over the map. Um, we've got uh, a little SaaS, a little business, e-commerce, finance, education, no gaming, entertainment. That's fine. Um, but all right, now we're gonna do the next one real quick. Um, how much data are you responsible for protecting? That's what we're going to throw up there now. There's only a couple of tiers there. Um, I suspect that most of you will be in the first couple of tiers, um, but, uh, but that gives us kind of an idea of who's on the call and, and helps us try to understand the size of the infrastructure that you're looking at so that Jack and I can frame our, our presets. All right. All right. Kind of as expected, a majority of you are under 100 TB. It's not uh, not kind of uncommon. What we see a lot uh, with the, the folks that are focused on um, trying to figure out what they need to do, the people that are learning are a lot of times challenged um, with, with not being dedicated security and InfoSec personnel. Uh, so it's great that you're here, um, and, and we know that that data might be the most important data to your company. So. Um, that's always kind of top of mind. So I'm going to kick things off and talk a little bit about, you know, why security has become so dang challenging, right? Um, and it's a multifaceted problem that everyone is dealing with every single day, right? So as your company gets more technical, more digitally transformed, right, to throw that buzzword out there, um, what happens is, is the data starts to move everywhere, north, south, east, west, multi-cloud, right? And the, the, the data that used to be the crown jewels that sat inside the protected environment and just never got touched, right, is now everywhere. It's hybrid, it's in SaaS platforms, it's, it's really truly all over the map. Um, and then you take kind of the human problem and you marry that in and you say, I am asked to manage all this data in all these places, keep it all secure, and my budget for cybersecurity is either lower than it used to be or the same as it used to be, um, but with a completely new set of challenges. So we see security complexity just co rapidly outpacing the capability. It is the organizational knowledge, but it's really the total capability of these organizations, right? And we're talking to customers every single day, and we're trying to understand um, exactly what they're challenged with um, and how uh, their organization is dealing with it. And what we hear and see um, with, with our customers, uh, and I think Alert Logic is going to talk a little bit about this in more detail in the next slide, but as we, as we look at that, what we're finding is that you just can't keep up. You don't have the budget. You don't have the solutions. Um, and even if you built the solutions at one point and put them in place, right, a lot of times they're not being looked at. They're not being monitored. And effectively, the security uh, is ineffective. The security solutions that you've chosen to employ are ineffective. And then you round all that off with an adversary. And Jack and I were talking uh, yesterday or the day before about this. And it's really, truly this 
uh, phenomenon, right? Where there's all kinds of threats. Um, uh, and the only real analogy is kind of military in nature, right? But there's this adversary that's making it hard to, to, to keep your data safe, right? Most of the people that probably are the folks on this call are infrastructure people, they're IT people, right? And, you know, I, I made this analogy about, you know, servers, you, you set up your infrastructure, you set up your servers, you set up your storage and network, et cetera. Um, and yeah, things happen and you can build for protection and build for resiliency. Um, but you're not faced with just this adversary every day that's walking into your data center and just unplugging servers and unplugging storage, right? In information security and in cybersecurity, and as you look at the application layer for the most part, although there, there are quite a few, you know, kind of physical security issues, but as you look at this kind of software layer for the most part, there, there's someone out there attacking you and you're having to do all this uh, extra protection, with all this data everywhere, and you're faced with an adversary that's trying to make your life uh, hell, right? So um, I think it's really important that we all look for ways to do things better. And I'm gonna turn it over to Jack for a little bit to talk about some of the work that he's done with his team at AlertLogic to really show why this is important and talk about how you can address some of these problems. Well, thanks, Amelia, for that, William. And it, it's a great introduction to this. And the introduction of the adversary, right, as a component, it helps us understand why some of the focus of what we're gonna talk about today is using a metaphor that you'll all find pretty easy to communicate, perhaps even to your management, right? So that they understand better the challenges that you're trying to solve in security. And it goes back to the points that William was making, right? As, as we think about the way in which organizations are investing in security, uh, it's difficult to understand the breadth and the changing nature of the challenges that they're trying to address. On the left-hand side of this slide, you'll see that there's some numbers that you should feel free to use, right? These are all third-party numbers, and they say that even though organizations have been increasing in investment, we continue to see increases in the damages they get caused. So whether it, it's the number of breaches, uh, whether it's how long breaches live, you know, the dwell time, or whether it's the cost associated, there's a lot of good people doing a lot of good work, but in a traditional model, right, of buying products and trying to do your best, there's, there's been an inability to keep up with the bad guys. And the chart on the right is one that I put together because having watched this for a lot of years, um, it felt as though people were working so hard, but that we weren't necessarily gaining as much ground, that the organizations trying to be protected weren't gaining as much ground with the product purchases and what have you. And so when you look at that slide, it shows that as rapidly as investment has increased uh, in security over the last you know, 10 years or so, the one thing that's, in, in, that's increased even more quickly has been the amount of losses, right? And that's, that's a really important thing to think about because that doesn't point to the fact that people aren't doing enough, right? It points to the fact that most likely they need to think about the problem in a different way. Uh, and that's why as William and I are talking today, I want you to keep in mind that what we're trying to battle is something that's almost organic, right? The growths of the technologies and the processes and the methodologies put in place by the tech community, they learn from one another, right? They morph, they evolve. It's, it's almost like genetic mutation where they figure out what works and move on to something new. So an attack, isn't like they bring a tank and try to get through the front door. Instead, they surround a system and they look at all the, the changes to the result of the digital transformation that William described. And they try to find places where all of that new complexity has created gaps or where all of that complexity has left blind spots or places where just organizations have inattention. And so as they're trying to wrestle with this, if you move to the next slide, you see that what they're contemplating is a change in the way in which they can approach this so you can think about it more in the way that you think about protecting your health. And I just want to touch this for a moment because I think it brings home the, the metaphor in a way that makes it a lot easier to communicate. So if I'm thinking about fighting cyber attacks, let's think about it, and it's kind of topical now, all this is, this is something we've been talking about for some time together, uh, but think about it in terms of fighting illness, right? If I want to protect my health care and my health, my family's health care and their health, um, I tend to think about going into a system for it, right? I think about doctors and hospitals and orthopedists and recovery centers and surgeons and what have you. And, and why is that? Well, number one, 
I can't just expect one gal or one guy to do everything for me, right? I can't like hire the most brilliant doctor in the world and say, all right, doc, you're in charge uh, because there are thousands and thousands of types of illnesses, right? Each of which has their own family of symptoms. It has their own sources. It has the, the ways that they evidence themselves and fixing it and understanding it is also really, really specific. And so there's all that knowledge and it changes all the time. We see how rapidly the diseases evolve. Well, it's even worse when it comes to cybersecurity, right? If you look at uh, rates of creation of new malware, right, there's three or 400,000 new forms of malware that arrive every single day. There are any number of very popular, relatively well-known attacks on the endpoint that are polymorphs, right, that land. And the very first time they're ever seen in their complete form is the time they're running and they're never used again, right? They instantiate themselves in a way that's always brand new. And so if I'm relying on, you know, a single thing to protect me, it's unlikely, right, that my team inside an organization who's busy doing e-commerce perhaps or banking or maybe they're in a manufacturing company are going to be able to keep up with every single aspect of this in the way that a specialist would. So in healthcare, you think about going to hospitals, right? Because they have teams of people who are studying this all the time, whose jobs it is to understand whatever one of these illnesses is, whether it's a broken bone um, or whether it's an epidemiological event or whether it's the common cold, whatever it is, there will be people within that environment that understand it. And so there's a specialized knowledge that exists both in fighting illness and in fighting cyber attacks. Now, secondly, there's this question of staffing right? The, how many people do you need to manage your health care? Well, if I'm pretty healthy all the time and I just need to see, um, you know, my general practitioner once a year to check me out, I'm okay. But what if there's an automobile accident, heaven help us with myself and my family? Or what if there's some regional event that happens? Well, suddenly I need a whole bunch of people to make sure that everything gets managed the right way. Or if there's a new illness that comes along, right, that causes us to need a lot more health care. And so, again, like in fighting these different scales of illnesses, right? You've got cyber attacks that are the same thing, right? Different kinds of cyber attacks have different effects. Are they single focused? Are they land and expand? How do I understand how many folks I need and with what skills from that earlier slide, that early section of the slide to be able to address it? So again, healthcare provides us with a great example of how a hospital has all the different kinds of people and plenty of them to help me solve the problem. And it's that the same metaphor holds true when you start thinking about the right way to handle your security, right? So I need lots of different kinds of knowledge and I need lots of people who can take advantage of it to, to help me out when it comes to cyber attacks. The last piece is infrastructure. So it's not likely that my local doctor is gonna have the MRI machine or the sophisticated testing or some other kind of lab equipment that I need, or perhaps a full surgical theater to do operations on me, even if they had that capability. There's a certain level of infrastructure that supports healthcare. And it's the same thing with cyber attacks and understanding security. Having the infrastructure to provide support for those experts with all that knowledge and in all of their volume means that you have to really have built this thing out to understand how to process the information and to draw conclusions conclusions from it. And in security, it's one of the most thorny technical challenges simply because of the variety and the volume of data that you have. You know, every type of device that you end up dealing with, every application, every operating system, every platform, every framework has its own security characteristics. And so being able to gather all that information and then sort through it and deduplicate it and make sense of it and perform analysis on it in a way that is anything close to real time and effective, it requires you to have a very specialized kind of infrastructure just like that hospital. So the reason we spent some time on this slide is to, to give you a mental model for it that's super familiar to you from the rest of your life, but start thinking about security in the same way. Because if you can approach security with a mindset that says, it's not my responsibility to go buy a handful or a basket full of tools and then magic happens. It's not like that any more than if I went out and I bought a bunch of bandages and some scalpels and some medicine, I'd be able to cure my own health issues no matter what they may be. This really is a place where services are super important and where understanding what you're looking for and what you're trying to do, you know, it is what you're trying to get to at the end of the day. And that's what we're gonna talk about next. There's a new 
framework that people are using to talk about managed security particularly, which is called managed detection and response. And it's been around for a little bit of time. Um, it's had a lot of different meanings. Uh, and the basic idea behind it is that most organizations, when they think about organizations managing their security, they're looking for uh, someone who's going to be able to understand what's happening uh, inside their environment because they recognize what this slide says, which is that no organization is 100% secure. So the way to come to this conclusion, you could ask this of your own management team, of your colleagues or friends. I ask people this all the time. Do you think you're 100% secure, right? And you walk through this little flow chart with them. And so if I look at that first part of this chart, the left-hand side that says, are you 100% secure? Pretty much everybody says, no, but some people may say yes, and so you get them some counseling and they come back through, and eventually they say, no, I'm really not. And so the next question is, what do you want to do? Well, the natural predilection of a lot of organizations is I'm going to go buy some more product, right? They may say, I'm going to buy a new IAM solution or I'm going to go buy a new style of firewall. And then you say, okay, great, let's do that. And you say, if you do that, if you're looking forward, you've done that, will you be 100% secure? You know, will you go tell your boss, hey guys, we're 100% secure now. No one ever will. And so what you come down to is this conclusion and one of the foundational understandings that drove the creation of MDR as a, as a new marketplace is, that no one's gonna be 100% secure. And so therefore I need to have a partner or a service that is going to minimize the likelihood and minimize the impact of bad things when they happen. And so if you think about the way in which that happens there's three basic components of it, right? And those three components are that I have to make sure that I understand what's happening in terms of being able to detect what's going on. That means being able to see all the different places where attacks can happen, understanding from an intelligence perspective what's going on so I know what's, what's happening in terms of my environment. The second piece of this is the response angle, right? How do I intermediate that attack in such a way that it allows me to stop severe damage from happening? And then the last piece of this is how do I actually accomplish it, right? How do I relate to the technologies that are necessary to support this so that I can, for my own purposes, uh, be able to solve the issues in a way that is both timely and it's cost effective, which means am I gonna do it myself or I'm gonna have it done someplace else? Um, and to do that requires those these three basic capabilities, right? It requires a platform that allows me to see across all these different systems and these environments to gather the data that I need. I need threat intelligence that allows me to understand where the risks are and actually what I do about those risks when I see them. And also the industry experts, right? This is how do I translate all that information into meaningful data when it comes into the hands of my own organization to figure out what to do. Um, security has long suffered by a lack of clarity um, around these kinds of definitions. And the, there has been traditionally problems with things like alert fatigue because of false positives and organizations either over or underreacting. And so this combination of getting all that information, having the right intel, and then having the right experts on hands to translate it into value for us as organizations makes it important. And it's not just um, Phoenix Nap and Alert Logic and vendors talking about it. The analysts as well recognize that this is a new space, right? That's going to be increasingly meaningful for people. So if I look at Gartner, right, the Gartner group will tell you, and I think significantly the second stat there, that 40% of mid-sized enterprises just as a group are going to have only MDR as a managed security service, right? So historically, you know, going back 20, 30 years, uh, managed security services meant everything from configuring firewalls to correlating logs, what, ha logs, what have you, but really the emphasis is on value and that value is doing this minimization of both likelihood and impact. Um, we see from Bloor as they're writing it up, there's a growth in market need um, for what's happening in terms of MDR because there's an increasing burden on these organizations to make things work. And lastly, you know, we, we've actually taken time. Uh, Alert Logic has spawned the creation of what we call the MDR manifesto, which is not a uh, description uh, of Alert Logic projects uh, products. It is actually a market document that talks about what does it mean to do MDR. A lot of support from the various analyst firms um, and our partners in understanding how to define this. And it's a work in progress. And, and when you take a look at some of the um, available materials from this presentation, you should go take a look and join the community as we have debates about what it actually means to do MDR, because it's meant to be a clarifying document to eliminate some of this confusion. Uh, because 
the provision of MDR, right, and understanding of how to consume it is a relationship and it's a conversation that exists between strong partners like Phoenix Snap, um, organizations like Alert Logic providing uh, the underpinnings and the security expertise and infrastructure, and the customers, right, who allow that contextualization, that ability to translate security data into meaningful business context for the organization. And this is one of the many things that, that Phoenix NEP does well and that we're, we're happy to work with them on. Um, and having said that, I'd, I'd love to turn it back over uh, to William for more information on, on really the Phoenix NEP approach to solving this problem. Thank you so much, Jack, and thank you for dealing with that. So uh, if you're not familiar with Phoenix NEP, uh, we have been in the business of infrastructure for the last 10 years. We spent the last kind of 10 years building this broad infrastructure platform across the globe that we could deliver a single platform of services with one provider, right? And I believe in this idea of secure infrastructure, right? As we went to build our products and services, we said, look, the, the way that, the, that we can help those businesses out there that need it the most is by providing not only uh, the infrastructure and the CapEx to OpEx, but also the security and availability services that they so desperately need uh, to keep their business kind of moving forward in the right direction. It is about um, having that kind of IT security and business alignment um, and leveraging this kind of platform as, as Jack you know, you spoke about earlier, leveraging a platform of services that can um, help you from an infrastructure perspective, can help you from a, an availability, what's backup, disaster recovery, and then can help you from a cybersecurity perspective. And you're, and by working with folks, uh, not just Alert Logic and Phoenix, I'm working with anybody, right, to help address some of these needs, you get that skill special, specialization that you need to keep your business safe. Um, and I think that that's, if you don't get anything out of this presentation, although Jax has great content, it really truly is, um, you know, those high level concepts. So a lot of you, if you are familiar with us, uh, you may be familiar that we have uh, so a large deployment and in Virginia, obviously our Phoenix kind of uh, headquarters and, and, and large deployment there and data center operations, but we have spent the last five years building out the global footprint so that we can help customers pretty much anywhere, right? And we're working hard to make all of our services available in all these locations because we truly believe in the idea of a secure infrastructure platform. So what does this look like, right? At a high level, why are we here? Alert Logic and Phoenix Snap, right? What uh, became uh, a, a, a real understanding for me in the last three years, as I started my career in information security, is that um, the infrastructure solutions and the cloud services providers out there were not doing enough with the technologies that they had access to, with the partners that they could employ to build security into the infrastructure and ensure that, um, you know, and ensure that uh, not only are the small, medium enterprises of the world that need the most help protected, um, but that they can draw on the vast experience and investment of a platform and services delivery organization, right? So when you look at what it looks like inside of our product lines today, we started our relationship with Alert Logic in a platform that we call Data Security Cloud. It is our flagship cl cl cloud platform that is designed to be kind of a wrap your arms around you, uh, 360 degrees of protection, both at the infrastructure layer up to the hypervisor, and then adding in the tools and, and, and intelligence from Alert Logic and our NOCSOC uh, interpreting that uh, and helping you as a customer. So, we, you know, Jack and I, the conversations that we've had, we have this kind of true belief that you need uh, two sets of organizations to help you uh, be completely protected. You need a uh, organization that specializes in cybersecurity and threat management that can look at 
all that can deliver the tools, the platform, and the consistent monitoring that the 300 24 7, 365 monitoring layer. And then you need a partner that understands the infrastructure uh, and application so that they can um, help you with remediation so that they can help you and give bring context to the data that's being fed from the intelligence platform. I think of alert logic as kind of our um, uh, threat management refinery, right? They're taking all this oil and gunk and stuff and they're giving us gasoline that we can do something with, right? And that helps us um, help our customers. And that's the most important thing. So you ask, uh, what does this look like, right? So we look at secured by design architecture that we've, that's our kind of moniker for data security cloud and what we've done there. Um, we looked at everything from the hardware and the security layers that are invested there. We look at um, the, the, the hypervisor and securing those technologies and implementing best practices and configurations, building all of the compliance components around that because compliance and security are not the same thing regardless of who, who tells you that, um, and making sure that you can be protected even in the event of a failure uh, of your cybersecurity platform, right? And ensuring that you have a known good copy of that data and your data is ultimately secured, right? It may not stop a data leakage event, um, but it can absolutely stop a data destruction event. Um, and that's kind of the, the holistic idea of what we're trying to accomplish. So as this slide builds out, I'm gonna talk a little bit about, you know, what uh, components, you know, are, are, you know, built out inside of the data security cloud platform. So you have this HP Nimble hybrid flash storage. We also have an all flash vSAN uh, storage layer. Um, you have uh, Arista 10 gig networking, top to bottom, uh, brand new Intel Xeon scalable host cluster. So it's you know, kind of the newest of the new server infrastructure, all the bells and whistles from VMware, including NSX and some of the great technologies that are there. Um, and then a absolutely premium uh, ISP infrastructure that is uh, lever layering in DDoS protection to help kind of that uh, big heavy hitter attack um, that can that can you know hurt you guys uh, uh, more than a lot of times more than other cybersecurity events. If your business is offline, um, it, it gets the same effect. Um, we add in the, the technologies from Veeam uh, to to protect all of that data, and then we overlay in the services and threat management and tools and platform that Alert Logic provides, um, along with optionally their kind of 365 uh, monitoring service. Um, and uh, we are confident that we are producing a highly secure, consistently monitored infrastructure solution that is competitive with the public cloud offerings that are out there from uh, the, the people that everyone thinks of when you think of the cloud, right? AWS and Google and, and Microsoft. So, um, I think that when you add in the fact that VMware is the underpinning of that technology and that it's natively more com uh, compatible with many of the infrastructures that you operate today on-prem, uh, it really truly provides this uh, best-in-class service delivery for cloud consumption and really exercises uh, the idea of hybridity and allowing you to uh, have things that you've invested in, maximize those investments, stage your migration to the cloud, and then ultimately go all in if that makes sense for your business. These are the options that we're able, that we're enabling. And as you look at kind of the high level uh, components of, of what that looks like, you're getting value, you're getting experience, and you're getting a cybersecurity uh, platform that can keep your data safe and can um, really assist in your business continuity um, and your uh, um, your the trust that you earn with your organization and the business because that's what it comes down to. Being in IT uh, is about uh, trust, 
right? And and really the the idea that the business trusts you to keep their data safe and keep their data available and make it go fast enough to for them to get their job done. So I'm gonna kind of roll out a couple more polls to try to close this off, and then we're gonna roll into questions um, and kind of see how that goes. So first question is, are you satisfied kind of with your current infrastructure uh, protections uh, and what you have in place? And this poll is being slow. Um, and the security around that production infrastructure, what does that look like for you? Right. Interesting. Um, it's a very, it, it's, it's, but I would feel that like most people would, would approach this and say, you know, yes, yeah, security is one of those things. Jackie, maybe you can add some commentary, commentary here. Like, I feel like a lot of people, uh, it's, it's like asking someone if they brush their teeth, like getting them to say no is, is hard. <laughs> Yeah, and it's also different, right, because tooth disease changes every day. Um, I think that a lot of the folks we end up talking about that I run into all the time who ask questions, they always have this vague sense of being ill at ease. They don't feel confident they understand what's coming around the corner. So I'll, they, the, typically the phrases they use are, I'm doing the best I can, or I feel like I'm protected against those things I understand. Uh, but a lot of times you can sense that uh, discomfort, right, that they're, they're not completely psyched because they're not perfectly satisfied satisfied they understand what they're up against. So I think it's a good question. Yeah, and I mean, I, I think that there's a level of honesty that's refreshing with this, you know, the, the folks that, that took the time to vote here on this quick poll because, um, you know, it shows how important uh, it is to organizations to be protected, that you're willing to go out and say, yeah, I kind of think I'm doing an okay job, but I always need to be doing more or, yeah, I think I'm doing an okay job, or, but I, I have to look at, at doing better and, and I'm going to go look at that right now. And then even the folks that are saying, look, you know, I, I think we're doing a poor job and we've got to fix this problem. That recognition, um, I, I can say certainly, and I'll talk to my marketing team, see if we can add it next time we do some a poll like this. But I, I feel confident in saying that if, if I had an option there that said no, and I don't care and I'm not going to look at anything. Well, A, you probably wouldn't be on this <laughs> webinar, but B, there's a very small section of folks in technology that don't care about security at all. They care, um, they struggle with what to do about it. And I think that that is the greatest challenge that we see a lot of people uh, facing every single day. And then last quick one, um, as you look at what you're, you know, you're planning to do and the infrastructure protection and solutions you have in place today, you know are you considering swapping them out? And if so, like how quickly, right? Because I think that um, it's important for us to have an idea of where we think the market is, um, how quickly people are focusing on moving that. I know that this uh, question is heavily uh, <laughs> coronavirus slash COVID-19 uh, oriented, um, but uh, I, I think it's still worth asking. And I'll give it a couple more seconds here for some people to toss their name in the hat. Then uh -huh. I'll share that with everybody. Share results. Um, looks like a little more than half of everybody's trying to do something differently, right? Um, they're trying to, and I'll be there in a second if it's not already there, but they're trying to find new ways to protect the data. Um, and, you know, I kind of expected this, uh, not, nobody in less than three months because nobody knows what the heck's going on or well, how their business is going to change. Um, but, uh, but I think that it is uh, important to understand that, you know, 60% of the people here that are you know, on this webinar today are thinking to themselves, okay, you know, I got to figure out something and I got to figure out something kind of now, right? The next year we have to have some, some stuff. Yeah, what I think so, is interesting about ahead, this Jack. is, what, yeah, William, I think what's interesting about this is it would be great, you know, perhaps next time we do one of these, we ask the question first, are you planning on updating your infrastructure? 
right? And when? And start with that uh, because I like the fact that these individuals, the 60% of them are looking at um, three three to 12 months is the time they may be reconsidering what's going on in security because they're probably doing other things, right? Strategic initiatives, but they're already thinking about when those new initiatives land, how do they integrate good security with it, right? So I, I think, it, it, like Absolutely. you say, it's, it's good to see things, you know, not necessarily in the next three months, particularly given all this confusion, um, but I think using it as a constituent element, the way people are planning changes to their infrastructure in general uh, is probably a pretty good sign. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that everybody on this call, to some extent, and maybe there's a few stalwarts out there, um, are actually of the mindset that they're on their digital transformation journey, their cloud journey, whatever it is, right, that they're, that they're looking at. They're, they're trying to figure out, where do I bring my workloads? Where do I bring my data? Um, if it's not going to be inside my on-prem data center or colo, and it's not going to be everything done by me, right? Um, and I think that, you know, the first thing people do when they're, you know, in, in, in the real world, to some extent, right, the, the home life world, they, they find the house they want, right? They go and they find the house they want, and then they worry about the finishings and the protection and, the, and this, that, and the other, right? And so it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a key point because it changes, right, depending on what house you're buying. <laughs> Uh, the, the protection solutions vary, right? Um, and I think that one of the things that we're, and, and I think it's something I didn't mention earlier, one of the reasons that we have chosen to partner together, but we're not just reselling alert logic to our customers, right? Is because we truly believe that um, one provider can, uh, be more in tune with the business operations of the customer and that will enhance their security posture with the right platform and tools in place and with the right infrastructure in place. Um, and I think that it's this combination. We actually started this platform two years ago, the Data Security Cloud platform, because we saw this kind of ad hoc approach to manage security services, manage technology services, and cloud services. And everybody was just kind of hodgepodge it together, right? You know, I'm in AWS and I have an MSP and I have an MSSP, right? And they don't talk to each other, but yet I'm still secure, right? Or my data is still available. And I think that's a fallacy that we've tried to um, kind of knife through and provide a, a alternative, right? A different a uh, way of thinking about it, as you mentioned earlier, right, uh, Jack? It's a, a different way of thinking about how to accomplish that. Yeah, well, I think I think that that whole secure by design and the way in which uh, Phoenix Snap looks at this, uh, I love the metaphor about the home builder, right? So most of us, you move into a house, if you have the good fortune to build one, do you want to build the house and then figure out how you're going to lay out sound and networking? Or would you rather be inside the walls right before the wall board goes up so you can put everything where you want it? And I think that when Phoenix Snap talks about, you know, integrating this understanding of security and the fundamentals of it and understanding its impact on the design of a secure your infrastructure, I think it really benefits everyone a lot. Absolutely, Jack. So, all right, um, I'm going to take a, a minute to kind of talk about uh, uh, something that my marketing team definitely wanted me to get in front of you. We are going to be choosing a winner from the attendees to get a $100 gift card, uh, and we will be in touch via email. Once you've supplied your email um, and registration, we will uh, be reaching out to uh, to give you uh, that. Um, so look out for that. Um, and then if there are any questions, uh, please pipe them in now and Jack and I will try to handle them as best we can. So I'll give you guys about 30 seconds or so um, to get a few questions in. And I think Jack, one thing that I uh, I had a question about when we were um, when you, as you were going through this, what did this evolution look like for you uh, from the just the the MSS to this managed detection and response, right? Like, what does that transition look like? What is the difference in the end user security and experience look like? 
Sure. Well, it's a, it's a great question, especially since like going back into the grim reaches of history, I built out the first MSSP back in 1995 when the rocks were still hot. Uh, and in those days, and in some traditional managed security services, you see it's a lot about sort of configuration and management of devices, right? Security devices, even at that time, tended to be more complicated than traditional networking devices. There tended to be a spread between information people were trying to get from security server kinds of information versus networking kinds of information. And so the job of the managed security service provider was to try to rest more value, right? Bring out more value from existing investments uh, in security tooling. And that's how, you know, a lot of the investment was justified in the managed security services. This is how I'm gonna get hands and feet to run this stuff that had already been bought. Well, over the course of the years, um, as, as more and more that happened, the, the landscape of the security technologies really, really grew. It multiplied crazy. At the RSA show, for those of you on the line, it's the largest you know, sort of security show. Uh, there were almost 800 vendors last year, right? And so a lot of different kinds of tools doing a lot of relatively niche uh, bits of functionality. And so trying to weld all of those together as a managed service provider, trying to use information provided by all these different tools that were never built specifically to talk to one another meant that there was a lot of noise and a lot of expense uh, to bring all that information together to try to produce some kind of result that was meaningful. And I think what the market did, and if you talk to the analysts, they'll tell you that they reacted to that, right? The, the market reacted to what they were getting was sort of the best that folks could do with what they could gather um, from this variety of different sources. Uh, and instead what they wanted really was just give me the answer, right? Help me understand if someone's attacking me, help me to respond and protect myself against it. And there's a there's a continuum of it, right? There's, uh, you know, from different folks I've talked to, some people think about, you know, MDR at its simplest as being like a pause button, whereas more fully fleshed out versions of MDR are much more about understanding what's going on and trying to remediate the problem that underlies it. And so there's been this maturation, not so much in the tech, uh, but in the understanding of the customer about what they have the right to ask for. And what they want, they want someone to help them to minimize the likelihood that they're going to be successfully breached. And when a successful breach begins, they want somebody to help them respond as fast as possible to minimize the damage. And they want that done in the context of their business, right? So it, it, I think the most change that I've seen, William, is a, an understanding on the part of the customer and in the market as a whole, that it's their right to ask for what they want and not try to cobble up the best they can get from things they may have made a mistake of buying in the past. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I can tell you that this the industry has moved so far from, you know, the whole 15, years ago, right? When I was a security analyst sitting there writing, you know, regex expressions for snort IDS, right? For my enterprise, just to keep the alerts down, uh, right? Sure. Just to keep from drowning from alerts uh, inside of, of our enterprise, right? It's, there have been a lot of advances in um, uh, simplifying the outputs of all this data and aggregating the right data sources to make sure that the information is actionable, right? That you can actually do something with it versus, you know, well, I've got a ton of alerts coming in and I've got a logging platform and they're all going there and I'll look at it when I have a chance, right? Which is honestly probably still 50 plus percent of the people out there, right? They right. bought security solutions. They deployed them at least partially. They <laughs> aggregate them somewhere, Splunk or the like right uh and then they hope something bad doesn't happen and they mostly use it for troubleshooting at post-mortem right something's not right i'm gonna go look at my platform and see what might be the case right um right but it's too late then right it's, it's far too late at that point um but i wanted to thank everyone for joining us um if anybody comes up with any questions um uh, you know, I think that we will be happy to answer them uh, over the time. Uh, actually, someone just popped in a question, so I'll, I'll throw it in there real quick. Uh, does it offer any end user spam, phishing, and awareness training? Um, we are working on some additions to that. Um, the platform today is very focused around the core infrastructure components, um, but what we're working with 
uh, Alert Logic and other partners on is how do we expand that out, right? How do we make sure that not just the core infrastructure is protected, but the rest of the auxiliary endpoints? And it's even more important now with remote work being so at the forefront, right? Um, I think that it's uh, it's something that uh, we're seeing the data just, it's, we thought it was bad with multi-cloud and, and, and SaaS, right? Now, everybody's on their laptop everywhere, or their home computer everywhere. BYOD is just, it's like almost a norm instead of like a, a privilege that some organizations are, 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 are rolling out, right? And everybody is having to make adjustments. And our goal is to adjust along with that, along with the way that people do business. And so we're working on different ways. Um, we have uh, some tools we use internally uh, for that uh, around uh, spam and phishing awareness training. And um, we're looking at ways to kind of roll some of that out as well. So with that, I thank you very, very much for everyone uh, for, for attending. Jack, thank you a ton for joining me today. Uh, and I look forward to catching up with everybody soon.